all know and we love. Okay. So I want to know, like, who is the Superman or the superhero in your life? Um, Superman in my life. Does it, I mean, I imagine it has to be a man. <laughs> it can be a woman. Okay. Well, the Superman yeah. is is um, somebody who I look up to uh, tremendously, okay. and somebody who has works tremendously hard, and someone who I get all of my um, hard work ethic from. Yeah. That's my dad. Okay. Yeah. Um, a super girl in my life would be my girlfriend. Okay. Although my mom as well. Because <laughs> okay. I can't say my dad and not my mom. Okay. So my mom and my girlfriend. Um, because they're very they're strong women and they're very supportive, extremely supportive. Yeah. Alright, so um, you opened for Jason Maris last week in yes. Korea. So how was it like sharing the stage with one of your biggest musical inspirations? Um, it was phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. I mean, the experience is just like it was just like no other, you know. Um, and, and quite obviously, from a professional standpoint, from a career standpoint. Uh, it was extremely advantageous for me. I had a bone and uh, too much coke. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, but also for me on a personal level, and I can't always say that, you know, because um, often you play a, a tour or something, and it's great from a from a career standpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, but this one had an extra element that really made me appreciate my career and appreciate um, the path that I chose to take. Because it's moments like that that make it all worth it, you know. Um, because for me, um, I started playing the guitar um, largely thanks to Jason Mraz about 10 years ago. And I told him, you know, uh, the first ever song I, I, I learned how to play was called You Make Me High. And that was a song on his first ever EP, and he told me that was the first song he ever wrote. So it, it was just really nice. And, and then he asked me to come up on stage and sing with him, I, I won't give up, um, and I'm yours. And so in front of 15,000 people, um, I had a big smile on my face. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and I will never forget that moment. So that's like one of your highlights in your career? Absolutely. Right. Without a shadow of a doubt, yes. So this is your third time in Singapore? Sorry? This is your third time in Singapore? Third time, absolutely, yes. So like, how would you describe the Singaporean fans in three words? The, the Singapore? Yeah, the Singaporean fans. Oh, Singaporean fans! <laughs> I've always said the Singapore infants. <laughs> no, I didn't know any Singapore infants. Singaporean fans. Mm -hmm. um, intense. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Very similar to the Malaysian fans. There's like this intensity um, of like, just like, uh, like, I'm a fan, oh my god. Um, and it, it's really, it's fun because they make the, um, the shows really fun. And, and I, you know, they're very, they're really kind and they're really um, welcoming. Um, so that's why we keep coming back, you know, because we know when we come here that we're always going to have a fun show, um, you know, and, and that's what we're here for, to put on a great show. So, thank you. Thank you. What's your birthday wish this year? My birthday wish for this year. Um, I want to try and, before before May next year, I want to try and have played in on, wait, I can't, not all seven continents, six continents. Okay, so that's North America, South America, Europe, um, Asia, and Australia. Australasia. What's it called now? Ocean. What's that? Is it Australasia or is it Oceania? Oceania. Oceania? Europe, North America, Asia, and next month I'm going to Australia. So that's four. So I got South America to go. What are the other continents? So as Anta Antarctica, right? Yeah. Is that six continents? I thought, <laughs> I thought that was seven continents. Yeah, I think you're asking the wrong group. Okay. No, I feel stupid now. That, that's all of them. South, North, Europe. Africa. 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 <laughs> How can we forget Africa? I don't know if I, maybe Africa. I'd have to go down to Cape Town or something like that. Johannesburg. Yeah. yeah. All right. So wow, look at those boots. Those are some serious boots. Thank you. You could probably kill someone, Kate. <laughs> um, so yeah, well, I would love to play um, six continents. Yeah.
Okay, so you just came from Asia to Algeria and Malaysia, and then in Singapore. So how do you find that Asian culture as a whole? I, it's, it's very different. Um, to, I mean, it, it, there's a lot of similarities, but there's a lot of differences. And that's what I like, because one minute you're in McDonald's, or you're, we just went shopping in Top Man, um, and it's very Western. Um, and then you, and then we're eating some hugely spicy rice-based food, um, and you know we're sat with a, you know a bunch of Singaporeans or Malaysians and whatever, and in, in a in a place that couldn't be further removed from the Western world. Um, and I, what I find from your culture is that it is extremely respectful. It's very you know people are very wary about other people um, and they treat each other, um, you know, pretty well, I think. Um, and they treat us pretty well. Um, and so, and it's very, it seems very clean. Um, so yeah, no, it, it, it's a very welcoming place to go. Yeah, speaking of food, um, are there any local delicacies that you appreciate? I you know what, I, I, a lot of it's very spicy. I don't do so well with spicy food. Oh, have you tried durian maybe? What's that? Oh, it's a fruit. Is that a smelly fruit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's highly like I think I've tried it last time I was here. I oh. think so. I, I can't remember exactly. Um, but it, it, is it nice? To yes. some people. It's some... very subjective. Okay. I'll have to try it again. <laughs> Alright. You know, I just had fish and chips for lunch. Ah, uh, okay. So, I found, and you know, you know what's funny? Because I haven't had fish and chips in since Christmas, maybe, when I was in England. Mm -hmm. So, it's nice. It's nice. Okay. okay, so back to me for a moment. So I'll let you know, what is your favorite guilty pleasure? Everyone asks this question. Yeah. It's funny. Um, I my guilty pleasure is um, I, I love listening to uh, Penny and Me by Hanson. You know Hanson? Yeah. Hanson. Yeah. You know the song Penny and Me. No? You don't? You know Hanson? You don't know Hanson? You do like Umbop? Mm -hmm. You don't know Hanson? Yeah, yeah. You do? Okay, so it's that band, but they have a song for Penny Me. That's my guilty pleasure to listen to that. Um, I'm sure I have more. I can, I can never think of. What about food? Guilty pleasure of food? Chocolate. Oh my goodness. Cupcakes. I, yeah, but you know, this is the second box. Oh. Yeah, I, I have my own box in my, in my room. Yeah, in fact, I got up at 4 a.m. and I had a cupcake. <laughs> yeah, okay. so I love chocolate. Mm -hmm. Alright, so um, your songs tend to be very honest and reflective, and um, you often stem from your own experiences. So, um, what's the most compelling and unforgettable story behind the song that you wrote? That's a really good question. Um, I think Broken Hands, these Broken Hands of mine, uh, it was on my first record. It was about a trip to Africa. Uh, it was about belief and uh, just about kind of grace um, and how I kind of, my experience in Africa building houses um, for people that didn't have housing really kind of brought this whole grace over myself in terms of realizing that we're so stupid. And, and, like, we're so stupid to, to be so involved in us, ourselves and what we wear and what we drive and, you know, just get so angry about the smallest of things. You know, like someone cutting in front of you, you know, in a, in a traffic jam or something. It's like, it's just not even worth it, you know. So that song is, is a little bit about kind of grace. Um, towards other people, yeah. So it's like, um, you actually do quite a lot of charity work, right? And a reasonable amount. I, I, I mean, people do a lot more than I do. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, recently, I went to China a couple years ago, and that was the, that's the best experience I've ever had during a mission trip. And I, I'm thinking about going again this year, uh, in the summer, to China, um, because it was just so, such an amazing experience. I would put that experience two weeks living without running water um, and 
a place that kind of smelled pretty bad, i got to be honest. Um, working with um, yeah, orphans, child orphans in China. I put that experience right up there with opening and singing with Jason Katz. I mean, honestly, it, it was a fantastic experience. Yeah. Okay, we've got time for one more question. Sorry, I speak too, too much. <laughs> One thing, one of many things yes. that I don't understand about girls. Um, I, I've become to understand them a lot better since I've, since going out with Molly. Um, Molly's my girlfriend, and um, I guess one thing I, I never understand is uh, is why they why they. Um, get so like worried about like weight you know? <laughs> why do they get so it's insecure about things like that you know and I feel like um, in general this is not for all girls but in general there should be less stigmatism behind you know how thin a girl is you know um, and, and, and that's 100% down to um, how the media portrays guns, and uh, why on the cover of uh, magazines there are girls who, I don't mind if there's a thin girl on the cover of a magazine, that's great, that's fine, good for her, but don't photoshop her to be this unhealthily thin person, because she isn't that person, and these girls, it's fine to look up to a girl that's skinny, that's fine, if she's naturally skinny. But for someone to idolize and look up to a girl who isn't real, is ridiculous. That's ridiculous. And I remember being in Victoria's Secret, I was buying my girlfriend a present. Um, and uh, I looked up at the, the model, and because I do a lot of Photoshop, I do a lot of um, graphic design for my stuff and the artwork, and I can see a mile off when something's being Photoshopped or not. And this girl was so Photoshopped that it looked just completely fake, and and she's up there just like looking cool. And every time everyone walking into the shop is about to buy some underwear, every girl is looking up this girl, and that's who they they, they want. To, that's why they're there because they want to look like this girl. And and I think it's just stupid. It's really stupid. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thank you so much for your time.